welcome. Thank you so much, Fortune. Mm. It's great to have you here today. Uh, so tell me, what's your story? So my story is that I was born and raised in Scandinavia um, to a, a very traditional family in the sense, you know, you go to school and you do your dues and, and everything kind of works, works out because society tells you how to do things. And that's all well and good. But what I realized very early on in my early teenage years, actually, is that that's not the path for me and that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to study and go to university and study until I was like 30 to then pick, pick a job that I would stay in for the rest of my, my career life. Um, so by the time I was 19, I up and left Finland and I started traveling around and I started moving to different countries. And since like between the age of, of 19 to three years ago, I'm 34 now, um, I lived abroad and I worked abroad as well, um, doing various different things, um, working for an airline. I worked in financial recruitment in London. I lived in the Middle East and in California. I've been doing various different things. And throughout all of these jobs that I had, even though I found a lot of pleasure within these traditional jobs, so working at, for an airline and working with them for national recruitment, I always felt that there was something else that I wanted to do, but I really couldn't put my finger on it. And one of the struggles I had growing up and through my 20s was that I had just so many ideas and I was under this impression that I had to pick one thing and that would be the career path for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Whereas I then decided to actually... I decided that enough was enough because I felt really unfulfilled doing my job and I started freelancing, but I didn't really, it was kind of just a freelancing for modeling and for makeup and started doing fitness classes, but I still felt like I wasn't really living to my full purpose and doing what I wanted to do. So as I, um, as COVID hit and life just hit a bit of a pause for everyone and for everyone around me and me included, I just felt like this is a prime opportunity for me to step back a little bit and actually look over my life and, and how I'm living at the moment and what I want to be doing. So I um, jumped the gun and decided to invest in a business coach. And even within that first session, when I relayed out all of my options and all of the things and all of my desires and things that I wanted to bring out into life with that one session with this business coach um she helped me realize and she kind of helped me straighten my mind out in the sense that i don't have to pick one action of things i wanted to do i just need to pick one topic and my topic i very much realized um i had kind of realized it before but i had been edging on it quite a long time is to support women and empowering women because that's basically the journey that i've been on for myself for the last 10 years um and through that what i realized then is that i can do that through very like so many of my different passions i don't have to just pick the one thing and um support women through one specific area i can actually select a few different things so my fitness class is one thing the inspiration through the art i create is one thing and then also the coaching that i already stepped into and then actually took to the next level through this business course as well mm, wow so superwoman yeah what, what does that mean to you Sure. So as the creator of Superwomen, I actually am, um, I'm changing the definition of a superwoman. So traditionally, what we know about when you look up in Google or when you look up in, a, in an old word, word book, um, you'll find that a superwoman is a woman who's got it all together. She's most likely running a business. She's running a family. She's looking after everyone in her extended family. She is doing all the housework, the homework. She goes to all the fitness class. She does everything, basically. She's got all of the balls in there and she's managing them. Quite often, though, what we do find, if you look at all of those traditional superwomen, yes, they're fantastic and they're so incredible at doing what they're doing. But quite a lot of the time, the end result is burnout and depression and anxiety and all of those horrible things that can come from doing too many things for others rather than for yourself. So I'm actually starting a bit of a war on the traditional superwoman word, and I'm changing it to a woman who is deeply connected to her inner woman, to her inner self, deeply connected to her intuition, really puts herself and her pleasure first so that she then can from her own filled up cup she can actually then serve others when she chooses to not because others are demanding it from her but because she wants to offer it when she can so in short that's probably that well that is the definition of a superwoman to me and someone who is really mindful of herself and um wants to develop wants to evolve wants to step on that transformational journey knowing that there is more for her and knowing that she doesn't have to do the things that are um, traditionally outlined in our societies, especially here in the Western cultures, we're very, we're very structured into a certain box of how to live life. But we can know as a superwoman that that's not all there is. If that's what you want, that's fantastic. But if you don't want that, you don't have to do it that way. Hmm. Um, 
what made you want to do that? Like, what made you want to help people? Like, what made what what brought that desire for you to say, um, I want to help people become superwomen? I mean, um, you're already doing it for yourself. You could you could you could stay doing that. What made you say, I want to do it for people? Mm. Well, I have a, a very compassionate nature. Uh, I was born compassionate, I feel. Um, I was born kind in that sense and looking after other people has always been something I very naturally do. I'm a very caring, I'm very motherly when it comes to things like this. But I, um, through my twenties, I had a bit of a hard time where I lost my identity completely for quite a few years. And I didn't really know not only professionally what I wanted to do, but very much personally who I was, um, how I wanted to show up and what I actually could bring to this life. Cause I knew I had just so much excitement within me but I didn't really know which way to take it um so with that and a really toxic relationship having lost myself in that way and, and being mentally abused for a very long time I just found myself at the bottom of the bottom and um not really knowing how to pick myself up so as I then had a bit of a turn and I actually found pound fitness which is also one of the formats I'm teaching today that's where I found my strength again and my voice again and I stepped into this like louder version of myself to to be able to come back into confidence so I realized that for me, there was a lot of different pathways of getting to this location of where I am now. And I'm still evolving. I'm still growing. I, I don't ever want to stop. Like I'm, I'm in this beautiful place where I, I find that there's always something that I can um, expand upon. And that's a beautiful thing to do. It can be a little bit scary, but it's also really fun. Um, and that's what I really want to, what I want to inspire women to do. And especially like one of the core things from a very young age was for me, the societal structures that I didn't really feel like I fit in. And um, I really want to inspire women to know that there is, there is more to life than what we might be conditioned to believe, especially nowadays. And we see so many things now. We see all of these influencers traveling the world doing their own thing. And that's great. That can be an inspiration. But I want to come in from a place of you can empower yourself to actually live the life of your dreams and desires. It doesn't have to be the turquoise waters and the traveling and the beauty and the influencer style. It can be whatever you want it to be. And um, that's really the place that I want to come in from because I had to I had to really break free from that myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like through my experience of having done that, having rid myself from the toxic relationship, healing from the wounds that I created within that space, um, being able to support other women in doing the same, no matter their path, as long as they resonate with me, then I can support them. Mm -hmm. So the sensuality empowerment, what's that about? You know, that's mm. part of, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's super juicy. So again, from a very young age, I've been very sensually inclined in the sense that I find it really beautiful. I find sensuality an essential part of of, of humankind really, but especially for women. When, as women, if we look at our feminine flow and the way that women are built and the energies that we hold within us, we're very sensual beings. But a lot of the time, again, within the world that we're living in, it's very fast paced. We lose connection to ourselves, And with that, we often lose connection to our sensuality as well. So I find that through connecting to your sensuality and giving yourself the space to see and receive pleasure, and I'm not talking necessarily sexual pleasure. Yes, that's part of it too. But also like the, like tantalizing your sight and your taste and your hearing with things that you love in every single way and actually seeing all these beautiful things in the world like just paying attention to how magnificent it, magnificent it is that nature changes through the seasons paying attention to sunsets paying attention to creatures in the woods that you'll find paying attention to how someone looks at you and actually like finding pleasure in these small moments and I find that when you do that you can connect to your sensuality and that in itself is a way of knowing yourself and that's how you can become empowered as well so I like to use sensuality as a means of finding your confidence and finding your your empowerment and if there's anything I can say about the clients I've been working with when they step into that space when they connect to sensuality a lot of times sensuality and sexuality is something that we're shamed for as well we're also maybe no one is necessarily shaming us but we're taught that it is shameful so even removing that stigma will liberate you. And in that sense, you will feel more expanded. You'll feel more powerful. You'll feel more like yourself. And that's where it all comes from. So what is sensuality? You know, you mentioned a lot about what is not. So what, what is sensuality for you? Mm. So sensuality is, um, it's a state of being. It's a feeling. It's something that just in your body when you have that tingle, and as I, I will say it again, it's not necessarily a sexual thing, but it can just be that like zest, having the, the curiosity for life, having the um, being um, compelled by something that you're seeing or something that you're hearing and paying attention to all these beautiful small things, like just letting life 
and your surroundings move you and feeling connected in that moment. Something simple, just putting your hand on your chest and, and breathing for a little while and just marveling at the fact that you have lungs to take all this beautiful oxygen in. That can be something that's so deeply connection, connective. And um, that really is what sensuality is for me. But like anything that you like, that can, you can make that sensual. Mm. So like letting life move you. Am I getting yes. that? Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Mm. Why is there a need today for, for people or we, the women to need someone to empower them sensually? Like, what, why is there a need? That will, like, what did you see? Mm. Well, I don't, I don't think that anyone needs me. I don't think that anyone at all needs me. I think everyone can do this for themselves if they're open to it. But mm. what I find is that working with someone who's, got, who's walked that path, walking with someone who you resonate with and that you like listening to, that can just fast track yourself into coming to that position where you start reaping the benefits and seeing the fruits or sooner. So I, absolutely, like someone can say, I want to become sensually empowered. They can start Googling. They can start, you know, doing their own thing, feeling what feels good for them. But some maybe someone would need me to say, or maybe they would need to hear from someone or read somewhere that try to look at the small things what is it that makes you happy and maybe that can be just the feeding ground of something that connects and opens up but I'm in no means saying that I am the only one that is needed for anyone at all like nobody needs me it's just a case of do they want to work with me do they want to get to that place do they want to feel inspired by me and they can choose that because I'm available for that mm -hmm. so it's, it's not a place of need I mean you could do it yourself however sure. if you're nurturing if you need the guidance and if you need, if you need to avoid, just avoid the things and get straight to the truth and get, you know, you know that support, then I am here for you. you know, Absolutely. Not, mm -hmm. And recognizing as well that everyone's journey is very different. So this is what I'm saying when someone resonates with me. I'm not, even if someone, let's say you have 10 people who all want to feel and become sensually empowered, they come from different places. Maybe only two of those people will resonate with my messaging, whereas there's going to be other sensuality empowerment coaches that they, we're, we're saying the same stuff, but we're saying in a different way. So they will connect with them in a different way and they might come to the same result but they might have a block with me or the other way around. So it's just really being open to that fact that you need to find your person if you do want to be inspired by someone and choosing who you're listening to. Mm -hmm. And that, that comes as well. That comes from a bit of a feeling, I find, when you're connecting with a coach or you're connecting with someone that you look up to or you're connecting with someone that you want to work with. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the confidence part, you know, what happened in the world where confidence was com there's, there's something that ha something happened right at one point confidence was lost you know it, it, it's probably a point in society or a, a point in individuality but what happens there uh, i believe i mean i'm sure there's several different answers but the first one that comes to me is i feel like there's been probably a lot of suppression a lot of suppressed emotions a lot of suppressed pathways um people not really understanding what's possible for them people being told that what's not possible for them and let's say even if you go back a few hundred years um there were a lot of well like even let's say even like 80 years there's been a lot of wars um i feel like there's been a lot of um collective damage that we've made if we're talking about humanity now that we've lost confidence in certain things we've also had a really rapid growth of cities and of societies social media came into play that's definitely an aspect as well that i find and um, for anyone really looking at social media and seeing these glossy lives and glossy faces, um, there's a comparison aspect that comes in. Maybe also there's imposter syndrome coming in, thinking that I want to do something trailblazing in my work. And you see someone else already cut you through the chase. They've already done it. But then we have to remember, if you're talking about business now, we have to remember that whatever I bring, as I said, you know, there's several sensuality empowerment coaches out there. But whatever I bring will be specific to what someone within my clientele will need. And the clientele, that's not for me, they will find something that's specific for them with someone else. Mm. So I feel like that's kind of where the confidence, you know, especially in the later days with, with uh, social media, the comparison game has been huge. Mm. Mm. And when it comes to confidence, confidence and sensuality, they kind of tie together, right? Like, I know, believe so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to that, what, what, what's, what's your message? Like, what, what, would you, what, do you, what, what do you want to say to people? Like, what, what are you saying to people? I want to say to people that, I almost want to say now, the, 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 I haven't said this before, but what comes to me now is that I want to say to them that it's okay to be natural. And what I mean with that is that whatever your desires are, don't suffocate them because 
for a say, look, look at a look at a woman, for example, quite quite a lot of time. I'm not going to say everyone because it's different for everyone, but a lot of the time, a woman is very much in a flow naturally in energetically we're very much a flowing being and in that way just allow that and I mean I personally have been a very masculine masculine dominated field I'm not saying with men but very masculine driven field um, where it's very pushy very driven very numbers oriented and I didn't feel good in that environment it didn't suit my character I actually felt really uh, really anxious within that environment but as soon as I removed myself and started allowing my time to be a little bit flexible a little bit free then I also started tapping into my my um, my superpower really in the sense that I can actually create a lot better work when I'm not under that type of numerical pressure mm -hmm. so really allowing yourself to see where you fit in and how you want to live your life mm -hmm. so what those that really connect with your message how can they work with you how do they get the chance to work with you Mm. So they can get a lot of inspiration through my Instagram page if you want to check it out. Uh, also through my website, through my newsletters. But if you want to work with me in person, I do have one-on-one -on -one containers that you can work with me on. We can do a, an initial power hour um, or we can do, I also have group coaching programs that are coming up and I'm also um, actually creating a membership platform, which will be a lot more accessible in the sense of the financial aspect of it. So it's going to be monthly, monthly mini modules, uh, monthly mini, mini masterclasses of connection. And that's going to be coming out um, still this summer. So that's a low ticket offer, if we say it like that. And then obviously the higher ticket offers are working with me very on a personal level um, on the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm. And they can do that by contacting you directly on Instagram? Yeah, absolutely. They can contact me through Instagram, which is where I hang out most of the time, or via email, any other contact details, Facebook. Yeah. Mm. You have Facebook as well? I do. So I have a Facebook page called uh, Creator of Superwomen. So that's fairly easy to find. And then my Instagram is my name, Charlotta Barman. Mm. How are you able to, you know, there was this, there's a story behind how you were able to secure Creator of Superwomen, you know, uh, the name. In what way, sorry, do you mean? Yeah, the, the, you know, how you, it came to me? Yeah, how it came to you and how you secured it a few years ago before even... Uh... Right, so hmm, that's an interesting question. So I actually started off with this, um, calling myself a thought icon, because I found that I just um, started writing. I started writing a lot of different texts that I published, that didn't publish, many of them. Mm -hmm. And I, in terms of the, like, the thought icon aspect of it, I just felt like I was... Um, I was creating a lot of emotion within a lot of people. So the feedback I got from these texts was um, very much like an unlocking type feeling like, oh, actually, yeah, I can. Th I think like that too. I haven't dared to say it. I didn't know how to say it. You say it so well. So I started getting all of these messaging from, from outside um, with a lot of women in particular, feeling really connected to the things that I was saying. And uh, through my workout classes, a lot of people came to me and just like in tears often saying that they just never felt confident. And now they feel like they can come into a room and take space just through having done workouts because they're so expressive and they're so loud and it's such a welcoming environment. I really try to create a community where everyone knows each other. Even if you're coming in for that one session, I want you to feel like you're part Part of this sisterhood that I'm creating there's some men as well but I'm, I'm referring to sisterhood because a lot of the my clients are women in all of my fields um so as I started realizing that a lot of women came to me feeling empowered through what I just did through my different avenues of work when it comes to modeling my makeup my my art my fitness my texts um I just realized that actually I'm helping create this and I'm not saying I'm not taking um, any kudos for them creating themselves at all, but I am potentially working as a bit of a portal for them to go from a space to step into that power that they want to step into anyways. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do the work, I'm not going to be able to help you in any way. Like, and that thing I will say will, will change how you're thinking. Mm -hmm. But if you're open to that, maybe I can work as that portal of messaging. And that's where the inspiration comes from for the creator of Superwomen. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And it came to you way before even, you know, uh, starting. Yeah, it was probably a year and a half ago. I, I want to maybe say like November 2019. Mm. Mm. All right. Um, well, great, great, great to have you here today and uh, love what you do. Uh, hope to speak to you again. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. All right.